So when you consider where we are with the pharmacotherapy of pain at this current time, I think we're still struggling in the sea of two competing public health crises. Certainly, we still have this enormous cohort of people who suffer with poorly controlled pain. Yet on the other hand, the opioid crisis continues to worsen. I often think of the song, I want a new drug, because I wish we had a new drug that could fix this, that was not habituating, yet would adequately address pain. I, and we don't have that. So I think our best defense is to continue to educate prescribers and practitioners and use good risk mitigation strategies to try and do our very best job for these patients while still not worsening the opioid crisis. Ketamine, lidocaine, and methadone are certainly special pharmacotherapeutic agents. Methadone is becoming increasingly mainstream and we use it all the time in palliative care. It's a really excellent opioid because it has multiple mechanisms of action. Not only is it a mu opioid agonist, it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine, and importantly, it's a mild and methyl deaspartate receptor antagonist. This makes it a useful opioid for patients who have mixed pain pathology. It also comes as a concentrated oral solution, so it's a long-acting opioid we can use twice a day or three times a day and use a very low volume for patients who have difficulty swallowing. So increasingly methadone is being used mainstream, but of course no opioids are free ride. You have to consider all the ramifications of opioid therapy and with methadone of course we have to consider the risk for QT interval prolongation. Ketamine is a strong N-methyl deaspartate receptor antagonist and increasingly we're seeing people at end of life who come to us, particularly in hospital, hospice or palliative care on very high doses of opioid therapy, 10, 20, 30 milligrams an hour of IV continuous infusion hydromorphone, and they're experiencing opioid-induced hyperalgesia. So we'll use a medication like ketamine to reverse that with very good effect. Uh, it's not a slam dunk. It seems like maybe 50% of patients will have a really um, superb response to ketamine and some maybe not so much. So you have to pick your patients carefully. And of course, I think we really are on the cusp of trying to figure out how best to use ketamine. We see this increasing amount of literature of using it for depression, Emergency departments are use, using it for patients with suicidal ideation. So I think we really are poised to explore all the best uses of ketamine. And lidocaine can be used intravenously for very, very difficult neuropathic pain. So we don't need it often, but when we do use it occasionally, it can be just the ticket.